AI is everywhere these days, and like the super serum pumping through Steve Rogers' veins, the Pixel 8 Pro is injected with it. With algorithms baked into its DNA offering new ways to edit photos, limit background noise from videos, and generate unique wallpapers. Combine those features with a big display, smooth performance, and a slightly refined design, and you get the best Pixel handset for power users. Compared to the smaller Google Pixel 8, you'll be equipped with a third telephoto lens, a more variable refresh rate, a brighter screen, longer battery life, pro camera controls, the promise of a new video boost mode to enhance the look of recorded footage using AI, and, for some reason, a built-in temperature sensor. I spent around two weeks using the Pixel 8 Pro as our daily handset, going hands-on to find out how it compares to the previous batch of Google phones, including the Pixel 7 and the 7 Pro, alongside the much more affordable Pixel 7a. While I'm not convinced that it's the best option for more casual users, I reckon that the plethora of AI modes and that extra camera lens will be attractive to photographers. Let's be honest, the Pixel 8 Pro looks pretty much like every other Google phone since the lineup's design was refreshed two years ago. But peek closer and there are a few new touches. The corners are a bit more rounded, the screen no longer slopes off at the edges, and most noticeably when you hold it, the back is now a matte finish instead of the glossy panel you'll find on the back of the rest of the lineup. The pixel-defining camera bump that runs along the full width of the back is still made with a shiny aluminium instead of a brushed polish on the more affordable models, and the main cameras are now enclosed inside a single pill-shaped module instead of two separate areas. The camera hump protrudes slightly more than the Pixel 7 Pro, but you won't notice that during day-to-day -day use. I don't mind it. For me, the overall design of the Pixel still really works. The finish is more fingerprint resistant than the previous prom models, but even though it feels like a luxury touch, you'll want to invest in a case for extra grip and protection. This is still a very slippy smartphone. I've used the phone in all types of conditions, from in lower light while relaxing on the sofa in the evening to a rainy day in a muddy field pumpkin picking. And there's never been an issue with seeing the screen. Even in brighter conditions, with sun glare while walking to the office, I can read text on the screen and apps without issue. The refresh rate adjusts between 1 to 120 Hz, and it lowers right down when it's idle or barely in use to save on battery. Going from the base model's 6.2 inches to the Pro's 6.7 inches panel takes getting used to, but if you're constantly watching YouTube or any of the streaming platforms, this is the pixel that you want to have in your pocket. The OLED screen has frankly stunning image quality for movies or TV shows, with inky blacks and fantastic contrast, and even the darkest of scenes looked great. I find myself turning the brightness way down when using the phone at night, but there's also an effective adaptive mode that'll handle that for you too. It won't be a surprise to anyone who has used a Pixel before, but the camera system is one of the most capable that you'll find on any smartphone, easily standing toe-to-toe -to -toe with flagship handsets from Apple and Samsung. Mysterious AI and machine learning algorithms are doing a lot of the heavy lifting behind the scenes, and while we're not always sure how it's working, the results are consistently impressive. While the results are more contrasty than the iPhone 15, so not quite as accurate, we like the colorful results and always find that the pictures are sharp too. The portrait mode is also particularly good thanks to its pleasing background blur. Magic Editor is one of the new AI modes. As long as your photo is backed up to Google Photos, you can tap a button to scan it and suggest cool edits, whether it's brightening the sky or turning your snap into a scene that looks like a painting. It mostly works, but it can be slow. For me, generating the changes takes more than 10 seconds every time, and I'm not convinced. Another feature of Magic Editor lets you shift or resize the objects in your images with a few taps. I love the idea of giving everyone Photoshop light editing skills, but we see niggles that suggest it's still not quite there. If we move an object that's sitting in front of a black object, the phone struggles to fill the background area, while resizing an object won't affect its original resolution, so things can quickly look a bit blurry. There is a lot to talk about the camera, but I have already made a review earlier, so you can check it out on my channel, and also don't forget to press the bell icon to never miss any updates in future. Meanwhile, booting up the Pixel 8 Pro and you're met with Google's new operating system, Android 14, which essentially looks just like Android 13. It's still very fast and free from unwanted apps. There's a big focus on the brand's own apps, including YouTube, Photos, and Maps, and it's now powered by the latest Tensor G3 processor. It's easy to get bogged down in software and chips, 
but what we can say is that the 8 Pro is fast and very responsive, with no lags or crashes. One of the new apps in the menu is Thermometer, and that's where you can control the temperature sensor in the camera module. This lets you hold the phone up to objects, food, drink, glass, clothing, etc., and check how hot or cold they are, but it's not designed to work on humans. We tested it on a mug of coffee and an ice lolly, and sure enough it showed us the temperature. What more is there to say? Why is it here? Not sure. Perhaps Google has grand plans for future updates. The battery on the Pixel 8 Pro easily lasts for a full day of use before needing a top-up. It's not a stunning update from the 7 Pro, but in our testing so far we found no radical drain under moderate use, checking our socials, taking some photos during a family day out, listening to Spotify and YouTube. If you're doing heavy gaming or loads of video and photo editing, we do expect you'll need to charge it sooner, but that's the same for every flagship. It charges to around 60% in half an hour. Some of my complaints with the Pixel series I've had for a while now. While the AI modes are fun to play with and show off, we can't shake the feeling that they aren't always actually that useful or just a bit creepy. Some, like the Magic Editor, are also quite slow and require you to back up your images before they can be scanned. The temperature sensor is baffling. Sure, it's a nice way to check if your tea is too hot before taking a sip, but I can't say I've used it once after our initial test. It doesn't have the proper clearance, at least not yet, to be used as a medical device, so it's not designed for body temperature readings either. The Pixel 8 Pro is the Android phone for power users and photographers. The Pro controls give you more ways to change settings, such as the ISO and shutter speed, while AI is baked into the camera system to give you excellent picture quality and lots of editing options. The new blue color looks great, and we also like the new rounded design, with a big bright screen that's excellent for watching movies. Even though Google increased the price this year, I think there's enough to justify the asking price when the handset is compared to other flagships. That said, casual users who don't need an extra telephoto lens and a few extra AI modes are still likely to be better off with the Pixel 8 here getting so many of the same features, performance and software support in a more compact form factor. So, what are your thoughts on the latest Pixel device from Google? Feel free to share your experience with the device if you already got the one and follow our channel for future updates too. See you in the next one. Peace out.